Hi, I'm Dr. Yo, and you're watching CPE in 3, our weekly series where I get three-ish minutes to tell you something of value in the college admissions game. And as you can see, I've got a nice warm fire going here at College Traffic Trust headquarters because it's around zero degrees Fahrenheit out. And uh, if anyone asks my opinion, that's not okay. But today, I want to talk to you about applications. Applications is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, in the college admissions game. I often tell my students that if admissions committee members sat down with you long enough to get to know you the way I've gotten to know you, they might well fall in love with you. And they might think this is just the sort of person we want walking around studying and contributing to life on and off and around campus here. Uh, but the reality is they don't get to know you that well. They do get to know you only through the pieces of paper that are printed off your application. Oh. Typically, Well, it's true that the best time to do the majority of your work on the actual applications themselves is during the summer between junior and senior year, and specifically August, right before senior year. Uh, you'd be well advised to think about the pieces of that puzzle well in advance so that when it comes time to putting the puzzle together you've got all the pieces that you're going to need and that there's no gaping holes anywhere. So that said, what are the most important pieces in this puzzle? Well, as if you've been following CP and 3, you know the most important thing is grades, right? The sum total of the grades and the courses you get those grades in, what we call your transcript, is the single most important factor. It's the x-axis on the Naviance graph. The second most important thing are your scores, and by that we mean the sum total of your scores. Either one of the currently accepted college entrance exams, that would be the SAT or the ACT, and then subject tests, AP exams. Uh, a quick note on that is if you are a kid who is going to use ACTs as opposed to SATs, you don't technically need subject tests, but I like to advise students that just because you don't need them doesn't mean they wouldn't help your case if you took them, did well, and included them in your application. So even if you're submitting ACTs, not a bad idea to try your hand at some subject tests. Plenty of information on the particular kinds on our website. Um, and then the third most important thing is the actual application. And there, there's a few pieces of the puzzle. There's, um, you know, what I like to call the forms, your name, date, serial number. That's where you'll report what school you go to, who your parents are, where they went to school, all that kind of stuff, any honors you may have won in academics. But really where it gets interesting is in your activities list. There you get 10 slots to tell schools about the 10 most important pursuits outside of your studies uh, that transpired throughout high school. And that, my friends, begins in ninth grade, and that's why it's important to think about these, these things in advance. Do you have to carry each and every activity through from September freshman year to graduation senior year? No, you don't. But it does play better in the college admissions game to have a few that are carried through. Talk to little. The main idea here is to approach your application materials holistically. And by that I mean, imagine you could put together a highlights reel. Highlights from the classroom, highlights from the playing field, highlights from the stage, highlights from your main activities, highlights from your community service work from ninth grade on. Right? What would be included in your highlights reel? You want to make sure that there's a, a, a slot that you're filling with each of these over the course of your application. So if you don't get enough opportunity to write about any activities, maybe you'll write a supplement essay. Or if you're going to use up a lot of space on one main activity for your personal essay, you may want to go in a different direction for your supplement essays and your activities list. The idea is to think big picture. Remember, admissions committees are going to see all your materials. The other piece of the puzzle is your recommendation. Who should you ask? A lot of times I see students make a mistake of asking a teacher who likes them. Oh, Mr. Jones, he loves me. I'll ask him. Well, okay, great that Mr. Jones likes you, but liking you doesn't get you into these top schools. What gets you into the top schools is teachers who can speak to your readiness for college. Things like junior rights at a college level. Junior did really well in all the tests and the final exam. Junior was a leader of class discussions. These are the buzzwords that teachers who gave you A's, as opposed to those who may or may not like you, 
uh, can say, and those will get the ears to perk up of the admissions committee. If you want to hear lots more tips on how to play the college admissions game to win, I strongly encourage you, and whether you are a parent or you are a student, you should all come to my College Admissions Secrets for Parents and Teens. I give the two-hour PowerPoint presentation at least once a month. Next one is February 28th, two weeks from today, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Birkins Blend Cafe in Glastonbury. I hope to see you all there. Have a great week.